I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce them real quick uh, while they're taking position, then we'll pray. Uh, Christian, y'all know, is my son. Alexander is my daughter. Well, my wife has a lot to do with it, too. So, you know, uh, our children, of course, and Matthew as well. They are going to play a song today. Uh, it's something that's kind of a little grungier than what you're normally hearing uh, on, a, a, on a worship Sunday morning service. But those of you who are in middle school and high school, if you're into worship and into learning about Jesus Christ, the second Friday of every month, we meet right here, and we've got an invitation out to everybody at the high school to come join us as well. And we'll have food, it'll be, we'll have fellowship, and we're going to get into some really grungy, fun worship music, because it's really good when you can just get down and worship, right? Amen? All right, let's open a prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity and the privilege that it is to be here with you today. Lord, I know that uh, Ted is having a procedure this week, Lord. He needs your hand upon him. And Lord, we know that there's uh, several individuals that are, are battling cancer, Lord God. They need healing and restoration. And Lord, we know that there's a, a, a two or three individuals that we've heard that are having back problems, Lord God. So we ask that you would minister and meet those needs with those back problems. And we're asking that you would move in this house today. And Lord, that we could bring you honor and glory and worship your name in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Today, I am just a man, a superhuman. Someone save me from the hate. It's just another war, just another family tour. Just a step from the end, just another day in the world we live. I need a hero to save me.
Let's get the rest of the praise team on up here. Let's get our kids on up here. But listen, hey, if you know any kids that would enjoy that style of worship music and just getting down and having a good time with Jesus Christ, tell them to be here every second Friday at 6.30 p.m. Dinner will be provided, and we're going to have a rocking good time with Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, kids. Is this all of our kids? Where's the rest of our kids at? <laughs> we kidnapped. Oh, no. We yeah. No? Okay, they're, over, they're, all, they're all still sleeping. Okay. All right. Well, let's, let's get ready to do our kids' song. Yes. I have to take a moment, just a moment, for a praise report that I am a really proud mama today because um, besides yesterday, Matthew won a silver and bronze for national taekwondo. And also my older one, Alexandria, was, um, she signed a scholarship, two years, uh, four years tuition paid for two years for TCC and two years all the college that she wants to go to. And also, and also Christian also signed a scholarship for two years at TCC. And then um, on junior high, right? Whenever junior high, if she, if he do, if he does what he's supposed to do, he will get another two year scholarship for all to any college that he wants to. So. I'm really, I mean, I praise God that, you know, I'm really, I've been smiling ear to ear all day. And this is like, I praise God that God is really, God bless my children. And um, the thing is, again, like I always say all the time, Matthew 6, every time, whenever you put God first, everything, everything, he said everything will be added to you. Amen. It's not just help. It's not just everything all things so include your children and i'm really proud of my kids and they really they work hard they work hard to achieve all of this and sometimes it's yeah it's i'm kind of like a heart but <laughs> but <laughs> what <laughs> what did you say <laughs> anyways um yeah i just want to praise the lord for that <laughs> I've got a joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to say, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Jesus in my heart.
Hey, kids, kids' class can be released at this time. Parents, please go sign your children in. Please go sign your children in. We got a few announcements to make while that's all going on. Uh, youth, sixth grade through 12th grade, out in the foyer, you'll see a permission slip. We need you to fill this out, have your parents fill it out and sign it. We are planning our next youth event. It will be on the 22nd, that is a Sunday. And that's, is that next Sunday? 22nd, is that next Sunday? No. Anyway, Sunday the 22nd, we are going to go to Fun Station after church, and we're going to have a good time. It's going to be a lots of fun, so please make sure you get those permission slips back in. There will be a $5 fee associated with that. If you can't afford it, please let us know, uh, but we'll take care of it. But we're looking forward to having a wonderful, wonderful time. Don't forget our Sunday morning services are at 1030. You guys know that. You made it here already. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Promise Kids is available. And our anniversary couple has arrived, so we must pause at this point in time and invite our anniversary couple on up here so we can sing happy anniversary to them. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. I'm, I'm curious how many years this has been. 20. How many? 20. 21 years, wow. Mikey, are you ready to sing happy anniversary to our lovebirds? I hope we miss that part. Oh, well, we, we already announced that it was your anniversary. We've been waiting on your arrival just to do this. Yes. Mikey, are you ready? You can't come between them now. They've been together for 21 years. Too late. <laughs> Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. And many more. Oh, look at that. They still get a little kiss after 21 years. Praise the Lord. Congratulations, yes. 21 years. How about that? <laughs> It's a long time. You got it, Mikey? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Going right on through our announcements, the first Monday of every month, the ladies have a food and fellowship meeting right here at the church. That's at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss that. The first Saturday of every month, and some of you guys forgot about it this Saturday, this past Saturday, is men's prayer breakfast. We had a wonderful time. We would like to see you there with us. The next month, the, starting on the first Sunday of every month from 3 to 5 p.m., will be the Iron Man, Iron Mongers group meeting, so you don't have to, it's male or female. It's a blacksmithing small group. So if you're interested in learning about blacksmithing, there's some information sheet out there about a proper apparel that you'll need. Other than that, all the hammers, iron, and all that other stuff Danny has provided. So uh, we're looking forward to that starting up. The third Thursday of every month is World Color <laughs> One meeting. Uh, it meets at 6.30 p.m. It's a Bring a Dish Fellowship. And the next meeting is going to be held at the Extension Office, correct? No? Yes, yes uh, correct, at the extension office. Uh, second Friday of every month, we already talked about His Way Youth, 6 through 12, 6.30 p.m. with dinner. And then the last Friday of every month, our family-friendly movie night with popcorn, which we already mentioned. Our next event, Man's Bible Study called Man Up, will be March 16th at our Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. address there. It's in your bulletin, as well as the Jesus River Festival coming up, March 13th, Friday night for prayer, food, and fellowship. Yes, Jesus River Fest. And then March 14th from noon till dark with free food, free hamburgers, free hot dogs, free Coke, free chips, free music, free prayer, free everything. It'll be great. Woo! Free parking. <laughs> Palm Sunday, the 29th, we have our next uh, 301 401 luncheon class. Also at 5 p.m., we'll be meeting at the Sop Choppy River for a river baptism. If you've ever been interested in being baptized or you want to get your baptism in order, I've had several people talk to me about wanting to do baptisms. We'll be doing them on Palm Sunday. That's the Sunday before Easter, March 29th at 5 p.m. at the Sop Choppy River. Bring a change of clothes or go however you dress. It doesn't matter, okay? Uh, I think that's all the announcements we have. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to do some worship. Y'all yes. ready to do some worship? Amen. Father, we just welcome your spirit into this house, Lord God. We ask, Lord, that you would just take away all, all, the, all the things that are running through our minds right now, Lord, and that we could just enter into your presence. Lord, that we could spend this time with you, that we could grow, we could fellowship, we could understand what it is you're calling us to do. Lord, we just pray that you would just move us in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand and worship together. Jesus. 
cross the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. Yeah. 
I was this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Early this morning, and I was not the same person as I was five years ago. Amen. Ten years ago, and I know God is still mold me <laughs> to be better person and get closer to Him. And I know He's still working on me. But I praise God that I have God that is so faithful that He changed me from the inside out. Yes, thank that you. That I am not the same person. I am not the same person. Thank you, Lord. Some people that knew me 12 years ago might surprise, but I know that I'm not the same person. That God still more me and is. Same goes with everybody. That He's not done with you. He's not done with you. And he's still working on you and each one of you. And he's faithful. And he's faithful. And we are not the same. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Here I am Sing it to him. Sing it to him. He's worthy.
said that us as his children we are the head we are not we are not the tail we that's rise right. above that's right that's we right rise above that's right everybody raise us up else. Lord. the only thing that he needs is our is our lives is our hearts and give it all and just give it all make this our prayer, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we give just you all of us. Over, Jesus. Just take over. Thank you, Jesus. It's our prayer and to you. help us, Jesus. Help us. Help us to surrender because we know that your plan your plan is way better than ours. And we know and we know that you know more than that we know. up as it may be or as good as you may think that it is. Yes. Just ask him to take your life. The only peace you'll ever know is when you know him.
worthy of our praise. done yet, are we? Oh, we need to do at least one more song. Y'all want to do one more song? Yeah. Oh, come on. Let's do one more song. Okay. Hey, wait a second now. You say you don't like the preaching? <laughs> There's not enough time. <laughs> Sing this one to you, Lord. We may be weak, but your spirit is strong. Even though I may fail, my God will never fail.
Give the Lord a hand. Amen. We got to give him our lives, right? I mean, you can be seated. Might have turned those house lights up just a little bit. Shane. Uh, yeah, there you go. I want everybody to be able to read. Very good. Very good. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. You know, we've been doing a series on servanthood. And uh, the interesting thing is that yesterday in men's prayer breakfast, Danny shared a scripture. Danny Willis shared a scripture with us about that he, called, he no longer calls us slaves, no longer calls us servants, but calls us friends. And I was like, Danny, man, you're still in my sermon. But I didn't want to tell him that because uh, the, the truth of the matter is that today's title is Beyond Servanthood. Beyond Servanthood. And so we, in this series on servanthood, you can turn me down just a touch in the house there if you would, Don. Uh, we've seen that a servant is marked by obedience and that the task of a servant is to be doing the master's business. And we know that his business, talking about God's business, is about sharing the gospel message and leading people to a right relationship with him. We've also seen that our, it's not so much about our accomplishments as it is about our faith. And today I want to look at what it means to go beyond servanthood. James Dobson, many of y'all probably know James Dobson. You've watched some stuff, heard some stories, read a book or two or something by James Dobson, tells a story about a time when he was on a business trip with his wife and his child. And they were sitting down and getting ready to eat. And, and his wife looked over and said to the young child, he was about two at the time, and, and said, as the two-year-old son, Ryan, if he would say the prayer before they ate. And the invitation kind of startled Ryan, and he didn't really know quite how to take it. But he folded his, folded his hands, and he bowed his head, and he said reverently, I love you, Daddy. Amen. Now, Interestingly enough, in Ryan's eyes, the most powerful man that he knew was his daddy, Dr. James Thompson. And so when he prayed, you know, even though theologically he was wrong, of course, you shouldn't pray to Dr. James Dobson, right? You know, even though theologically he was wrong, in his mindset, he had touched on a really significant subject that we as believers need to understand. See, because the most powerful being in the entire universe, God Almighty, actually becomes our father at the moment we become saved. And so we can literally fold our hands together and say, I love you, Daddy. Amen. Right? Some good stuff. And that's what I want to talk about today. That's what I want to get in on the subject today. Galatians 4, uh, chapter 4. Galatians 4, chapter 4, verse 4. We'll pull it up on the screen for you there as well. Uh, we're going to read verses 4 through 7. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman born under the law. Next verse, please. 
to redeem those under the law that we might receive the full rights of sons. Go on. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out Abba, Father. And the last verse we're reading right here. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. So we've been talking about servanthood, right? We've been talking about willfully and choosing and wanting to surrender our will to God's will, to take the mark of a servant. And we've seen in the Old Testament how, how the servant could give his life to the master and they would push an awe through his ear and it would mark all that he, was, that he was now going to be obedient to listen to the master. And we understood all of that as we studied that. And we understood that we too need to be the same as we come to Jesus as we accept him as our master, as our Lord and Savior, and he lords over us, that, that we uh, uh, therefore give our ear to him and, and allow our heart and our ear to be pierced in obedience to him. And we understood that. But this scripture says that you're no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you an heir. Now, friends, I want to tell you something. If that don't get you excited this morning, I don't know what will, because I am a child of God. I belong to God Almighty. He is my father. I can say, Daddy, I love you. Amen. And that's enough. Now, that excites me because I begin to understand that everything that he owns everything that belongs to him, everything that he's created. And by the way, in case you don't know this, all things belong to him. If you need a dollar, you know who owns that dollar? God Almighty. Amen? If you need some food, you know who owns that food? God Almighty. You need your electric bill paid? Guess who owns the electric company? Guess who invented electricity? God Almighty. Now, what I want you to understand about that is all things belong to him. They were created by him and for him. Okay, that's what scripture tells us. And it tells us here that we are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. Now, I want to just share a little story with you. I have a father, an earthly father. He is not a rich man by any means. But if his name were Donald Trump, let's say, and it's not. But if his name were Donald Trump, I would expect that I'm going to get some good stuff one day from old daddy, right? You know, I mean, think about that. If, if Donald Trump was your daddy, you're going to know that you're going to be left a bunch of buildings and money and cars and assets and debt, too. Don't, let's don't forget about the debt, right? You know, but you'll have all these things if he's your daddy. Well, guess what? You got somebody much better than Donald Trump as your daddy. Amen? And so anything you need belongs to him. So you, you may say this, this seems kind of contradictory to what you've been preaching about these last three weeks, you know, about being a slave, about being a servant, about, about surrendering your will to his will. Now you're telling me I'm a son. I'm not a slave, you know. Uh, what's the deal? And, and I want to show you that this, this, this whole idea of being a son tr goes throughout the entire New Testament. I want to read a few more scriptures to you. Romans 8, 14 through 16. It says, because those who are led by the Spirit are of God, are sons of God. If you're led by the Spirit, you're a son of God. It says, For you did not receive the Spirit that makes you a slave again, but to fear, but you received the Spirit of sonship, and by Him we cry, Abba, Father. Again, Abba, Father. Next verse. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. Children of God. God, that's exciting. Uh, 1 John 3, 1 says, See how great is the love the Father have lavished on us? Think about this. How great is the love that the Father have lavished on us? That we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that they did not know Him. We are children of God. Galatians 3 and 26 and 27, we'll read this one again. I know I'm just kind of running through these. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Next verse. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Now, 
Friends, I want to tell you something. This is a really unique relationship. We're special. We're special. We that have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior are called children of God. That means something. That means more than you could even think that it would mean. It's a unique relationship that God has given us. We are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. I want you to understand something. Until Jesus came, this didn't happen. This didn't happen. There were no children of God. The Old Testament, had a, uh, they had a special relationship. The Jews had a special relationship. They were called the people of God. Not, not the children of God. They were the people of God. They were God's chosen people. But they weren't called children of God. They were the people of God. Y'all be my peeps, right? Okay. But you ain't my kids. There's a difference. As much as I love you, if I got to choose between jumping in front of a speeding car for you, Adam, or for Matthew, sorry about your luck, buddy. <laughs> I mean, think about it. That's just the reality. And I know that you say that's not, that's not right. You shouldn't talk like that. But that's true. I mean, we're, we're earthly beings. But let's transcend that same thought process to people of God, to children of God. We're special. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we become children of God. And because we're a child of God, just like an earthly father would do anything in his power to save his earthly child, how much more will our heavenly father do to save each one of us? See, we don't have to be living in fear. We don't have to be worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. We can know that we got a Father in heaven that loves us. Amen. And he said, well, Glenn, sometimes it feels like I've been forgotten. Well, maybe you need to phone home sometimes. Amen? Amen? Amen. You know, you're living out there doing things your way, living your life your way. You know, you're taking your free will choice that God's given you to live life in accordance to how you see fit. You know, once thought about how he wants you to live. And you certainly hadn't picked up the phone to call home and say, Daddy, I love you. What is it that I need to be doing to get my life straight with you? Come on now. Y'all don't like that kind of preaching, do you? Yeah. I'm sorry, it's just true. We need to phone home sometimes. That's that ain't ET phone home. That's like, you know, prayer. Okay? Prayer. Some of y'all call it knee mail. After you get a certain age, it's hard to get up once you get down, so you just call it sit mail, you know? <laughs> amen. Yeah, who said amen? <laughs> Never mind. Now this 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 is true about the children of God and the people of God thing until Hosea. Hosea gives us a prophecy in the Old Testament. And, and in fact, 1 Peter 2.10 uh, talks about that. It, it, he quotes it. It says, and it says, once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And, and Peter's referencing about Hosea. And Hosea uh, chapter 1 verse 10 and I'm not sure if I had that up there. He says, yet the Israelites will be like the sand on the seashore, which cannot be measured or counted. In the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, they will be called sons of living God. So I want you to understand that it was pro prophesied that those that were not the people would now become the people of God. Not only the people of God, but they would be called sons of the living God. And that was a prophecy about all of us. And about all those who would accept the Messiah, all of those who would accept Jesus to become a child of God, a son of the living God. That is the first time that that scripture, that that phrase was used in scripture. And that was long before Jesus was born and lived and died that that prophecy came about. And not to mention that he rose again, of course, because we need him to raise again. We serve a risen Savior. But we are called sons of the living God. We're allowed that privilege because God sent his one and only son to make the sacrifice that we couldn't make. 
Friends, I don't, I don't know about you. I've tried to live a righteous life on my own accord from time to time. It's brief and momentarily. As much strength as I can muster up, it lasts about a second. You know, some of y'all better than me. You make it a whole minute, but that's beside the point. But because Jesus Christ came and he gave his perfect life on Calvary's cross, I have victory. I have victory. And I was given the privilege to be called a son of God. I'm adopted. What does that mean? It means that we are no longer under the law. Those that live by the law will die by the law, Scripture tells us. And I want you to know something. I don't want to have to face a righteous judge having been a lawbreaker. You know what happens when you break the law and you stand in front of a righteous judge? You do some time. Ain't nobody ever experienced that, have they? No, not in this congregation. I know that never have happened. Amen. Okay. Friends, I want to tell you something. One day we're going to face the most righteous judge ever. And if we go in there by our own merit and our own accord, by the letter of the law, you know what we will all get? Death. We will all have a death sentence. But Galatians 4, 4 and 5 says, But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Now, I heard it said like this, and I'll give you a quick illustration of what that means because you might be able to pick this up a little bit better. Let's say you're driving 75 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone. You know what happens? You get pulled over. When you get pulled over, the first thing I'll do is run a field sobriety test on you, right, to see how inebriated you are, right? If you pass that, you still could be going to jail because you have really, really exceeded the maximum speed for that zone. Uh, now, here's the deal. Let's say that the cop that pulls you over is a righteous cop, and he's not necessarily a merciful cop. And so, therefore, he's going to do all the things that he needs to do to make sure that you pay the penalty for the price of the law that you broke. It's not a good deal, is it? Now, let's take this back to another thing. Let's say the cop, this a righteous cop, maybe I should use police officer. Is cop offensive? I don't know if it is or isn't. Uh, a righteous officer, and he's a just officer, and he's a fair officer, but he pulls you over, and he happens to be the one that put the speed limit up in the area in the first place. He is now the law giver. And he comes up to your window, and he says, hey, you've broken the law. And as you roll down the window, he realizes that you're his child. This cop's your daddy. This could go one or two ways. And the illustration I'm going to use is going to be a very good way, okay? Oh, I didn't realize it was you, son. You know what? I know that I'm the law giver. I know I'm righteous and I'm just. And the law is supposed to, you know, state that this thing here and this, this, and this, and this is going to happen. But because I'm the law giver, I can also now forego the law and say, you know what? I'm not going to hold this penalty of broken law against you because the price has been paid. Now you see where we're going with this? You see, that's what's happened with God Almighty and Jesus Christ. God Almighty sent his son, Jesus, in himself incarnate in flesh, to give and pay the penalty for your sin. Therefore, you're no longer bound by the law if you've been adopted and you are now his son. He can have mercy on you if he so chooses. Amen? Scripture tells us in Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death. What is a wage? Something you earn, right? If you go get a job, they pay you a wage. What you earn for your sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, through Christ Jesus our Lord. You understand what a gift is? A gift is something that you don't deserve. It's something that somebody wants to give you freely. Now, you can do three things with a gift. You can accept it and use it. You can... Understand that it's yours and put it on a shelf and wait till next year during the white elephant gift exchange and pass it off to somebody else. Or you can take it back to Walmart and get you get, get the money that they paid for it, right? So now what three things did you think you ought to do with the free gift of eternal life that Jesus Christ gives us, that God gives us through Jesus? We need to take it and use it, right? 
A gift has got to be received. It doesn't do you any good sitting on a shelf, and it certainly ain't going to do you any good to take it back to Walmart because the money that you get for it ain't going to be worth what it's really worth, you know, because they're going to tell you they bought it on sale, and you're only going to get the sale price for it. I ain't never experienced that, right? Come on now. That's supposed to be funny. If I, oh, thank you. So I've got to tell you to laugh. It just loses all the point of the joke, right? Galatians 4 and 6 again says, because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out Abba, Father. Being called a son of God is not just some glorified get out of hell card. Get out of hell free card. It's just not. That, that's not what uh, being a son of God is. You know, I, when I was growing up, I uh, heard so many hellfire damnation sermons, you know. And uh, I got scared on more than one occasion, scared enough to go to the altar to get saved because I certainly didn't want to go to this place called hell. Okay. And I'd say the sinner's prayer, and I would leave thinking I had me a fire insurance in the back of my pocket, you know. I'm good now. I ain't going to hell. I can go live like hell, and it's okay because I ain't going to hell. Y'all ain't never been there, have you? I ain't never done that, right? And, and there was no change in my life, and, and I honestly believe if I had died at that point in time, I would have went to hell. I didn't have no get-out-of-hell free card. I didn't have no fire insurance. Of saying a few words after somebody didn't make no change in my life. There was no, no change. There was no salvation as far as, I was, as far as I'm concerned. But I will tell you this. There was a day and a time when God spoke right here to this heart. And it broke. Because I understood how much I had broken his heart. There was a moment in time when I just knew I couldn't live life the way I've always lived it before. That I had got to do something different. And I'd have to make some changes. And that was that spirit of God that was coming within me. That was telling me to cry out, Abba, Father. That I was being adopted. That I was no longer part of the family that I used to be a part of. I was now part of his family. I was no longer an outcast or a reject. I was no longer destitute and without. I was finally part of the family that had everything I needed. Every ounce of peace. Every ounce of joy. Every ounce of love. I'm not talking about financial gain. I'm talking about having the things that really matter in life. And that's relationship. Intimacy. Understanding peace and joy and his spirit in here now I know that we started off talking about the last three weeks I've been calling you a servant telling you how you need to be a better servant how you've got to have the, the mark of a servant be about the task of a servant you know understand that it's not about what you do but having the faith of a servant and today I'm telling you that we're moving beyond servant. We're going into sonship, into being a children of God. And they seem to be somewhat contradictory, but they're not. And I want to explain to you why. Two reasons, if you're taking notes, write these down. The first is this. We're servants, not slaves. A slave is owned. A servant gives. A slave has no choice about who his master is. A servant chooses his master. Y'all want to know something? Every single person in the world is a servant. You're either a servant to God Almighty or you're a servant to the other side. Now, I don't care how you slice it and dice it. If you call yourself living for yourself, you're still serving the other side. You're a servant to somebody. Being a servant means we have choice. And we've made that choice to completely turn our life over to God. Second thing that I want you to write down is this, that the, why they're not contradictory, is that as we are children, we've been adopted to be his sons. And because of that, we live as those who have gone beyond servanthood. Yes, we're a servant because we've chosen. But, and when we make that choice, we become a child. And we have the privileges and the rights of a child of God. Malachi 1 and 6 says, A son honors his father, and a slave is master. If I'm a father, where is the honor due me? If I'm a master, where is the respect due me? Says the Lord Almighty. Friends, 
as we get ready to draw this message down, I, I want you to understand what it is that we really need to be about. And that's about honoring our Father. If He is our Father, where is His honor? If He is our Master, where is His honor? 1 John 3 and 10 says, This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. Yesterday in the men's prayer breakfast, we shared a passage of Scripture about love and about how it is that we as men have got to learn, first of all, to love God first and then love others as ourselves. And I want to tell you something, when we become moved with compassion to meet the needs of those that are lost, to be there amongst them, I want to tell you something, there's some folks out there that you're going to meet that in the name of Jesus Christ are going to stand up with picket signs and tell everybody they're going to hell, and if they do this, they're going to hell, and if they do that, they're going to hell, and and you know what, we were all going to hell at some point in time, we ought to have enough compassion to meet those that are going to hell and tell them somebody loves them instead of cursing them. Every time I see folks like that, I just want to tell them Jesus loves them. That's the nice version of what I want to tell them. Thank you, Jesus. That's if we are children of God, we will honor God by striving to do right things, not wrong things, because we know that he's not pleased with wrong things. He's pleased with right things. How do we know what right things are? They're in this book. They're here. They're not hidden. He revealed them to us. Philippians 2, 14 and 15 says, Do everything without grumbling or arguing. Hmm. I don't even know if I have enough time to preach the rest of this message. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. How many of you know we are living in a warped and crooked generation? Amen. You know, believe me, turn on the news. God bless you. Turn on the news. You'll see we are living in a deprived, wicked and warped and crooked generation. It says it goes on. It says, and then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. I'm really going to try to finish this. Okay. Being a child of God, God bless you, being a child of God, it's not so much as uh, we learned about this when we were about the task of a servant, you know, and doing all these other things. That, that it, it's not necessarily the end outcome. It's how you get there. Do, do you understand really how, how you get there is really important? There's a lot of people that think it doesn't matter how I got there just as long as I got there. In other words, what I mean is, you know, it doesn't matter who I rip off or how I got the money just as long as I got the money. If I'm using the money for a good purpose, it's okay. No, it's not. Can't rip people off for a good reason. Still wrong. It's not right. Anytime to rip people off. It's not right as children of God to go out amongst those that don't know God and complain and murmur and gripe about people of God. How is anybody ever going to want to be a part of your church or part of your life? If all they ever hear is you mumble, grumble, and complain about everybody around you. Friends, I want to tell you something. The minute I want to open up my mouth about somebody, and some of y'all irritate me, God bless you. I won't tell you who you are. I'll go look in the mirror because I know I irritate people too. Amen? Amen. You did not have to say it that loud, baby. (laughs) She's raising a red flag of... Do everything without murmuring, complaining, and grumbling. Friends, we are representing somebody. Do you know who we're representing? Our Father. If we are a child of God, we're an heir to the throne, we are representing Him. Some of us ain't been very good representations. We put our, we got this foot mouth disease. Some of us know what toe jam tastes like on a regular basis. I'm trying my best to refrain from that because I don't like the way it tastes. Eating crow is not a good thing to have to do. Amen? Scripture will help us with that. In fact, it says right here, 
Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you will become blameless and pure. Some of y'all, I'm not telling you who, okay? I'm not going to pick on you. Some of you are really kind people. Somebody will open up their mouths and begin to say something about somebody you know, and you're like, no, you don't know what they've been through. You don't even need to talk. I heard somebody say the other day about clothes that people wear and how, you know, if you're bigger, yoga pants is not the ni- nicest thing to wear. But then they proceeded to say, how do you know that person hadn't already lost 100 pounds and they think they really look good? Who are we to judge? Why, who made us judge and jury? Friends, we have got to stop mumbling, complaining, and griping about everything and everyone and everything we do and do it in love and compassion and understand that if we're going to reach people, we've got to put our arms around them and lift them up instead of trying to drown them. I know I should have saved this for a whole other message. God bless you. We get praise team up here real quick. I'm going to bring this thing to a close. Have you ever complained? Have you ever argued? If some of y'all said, no, you're liars, you're going to hell. Oh, wait, I said not to talk like that, right? If you don't repent, you're going to hell. There, okay, that's better, okay. We've all argued, we've all complained, we've all put our foot in our mouth, we've all made, had the, the wrong mindset, we've all made mistakes, and you know what? Praise God we have because we've made our own mistakes. We should be more forgiving to others. Amen? That's why the Bible is so filled with emphasis on our being thankful and grateful. Because when we're grateful and thankful, we bring honor to our Heavenly Father. We should be those that are joyfully doing the work. Joyfully. Joyfully doing the work that is set in front of us. Because you know why? Think of this. God chose you. Of all the people he could choose, he chose you for such a time as this. God entrusted the gospel message, the saving message of who Jesus Christ is to you. In a world that is deprived, in a world that is dying, in a world that is lost, he's entrusted it to you. To raise you up. To call you a child of God. A son of God. He's trusted you. Why, I don't know. (laughs) Because we all fall short. But it's not about how many times we've messed it up. The reality is it's about how many times we get up and try again. Amen? The reality is it's about how many times we get up from that miry pit that we fall into and we try and try again. How many times we reach out to those that we've blown it with and we say, I'm sorry. I know I was wrong. Stop making excuses for your wrongness. Admit it. Can't stand it when you talk to people and all they want to just give you a reason why you're wrong. That they were wrong. That they were. You know what I'm saying. Just admit it. And ask for forgiveness. I want you all to stand. This, 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 this closing is going to be a little different. I want every head bowed. And every eye closed. I don't want no looking around. I want you to dim those lights. And I just want you to get real honest with yourselves right here, right now, this morning. If you know that you're a child of God, I want you to raise your hand. I see your hands. You know that you're his. You belong to him. Go ahead, put your hands down. Just raise them up. Put them back down. If you know you haven't been the best child that you should be, raise your hand. The hands are going up all over the place. Just raise them up. Put them back down. Put them back down. If today you're willing to say, Lord, I'm sorry. If today you're willing to say, Lord, I know I put my foot in my mouth more often than not. If today you're ready to surrender it all to Him, 
then I want you to raise both hands up in the air and say, Lord, I receive. Just say, say, Lord, I receive. I receive your forgiveness. I surrender my will. And I will do what you've called me to do without complaining, without murmuring, without griping. Thank you for trusting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, we're, we're, we're going to worship here just a little bit as we close. If you got something specific you want to pray about, or maybe you've never made a public profession of faith, maybe you've never publicly come down and said, Lord, I am yours, then today I want you to do that. I don't want you to wait. I don't want you to hold back. I want you to come and do that publicly. And if you have done that publicly, but you know that today you want to make a public confession that you are going to move on with your life, not letting the past dictate who you are anymore, that you're moving on, and you're doing so without murmuring, complaining. Then I want you to come. The altar is open.
I don't want you to wait now. I want you to come. I want you to receive what God wants you to receive this morning. We have people commit their lives to Jesus today. We have others that have family members that have needs. Whatever the need is, come. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Listen, uh, just because we close this time doesn't mean the, the altar's closed. If you still need to be at the altar for whatever reason, we still have prayer warriors up here that will pray with you. Uh, but we do want you to know how much we love you, how much we appreciate you being here with us today. And want to invite everybody to come on back Wednesday night with us at 7 p.m. for service. Ed, close us in prayer, would you? Lord, we thank you for another day chance another opportunity Lord we pray that you'll continue to lead God and direct us that you'll give us the wisdom we seek and the strength we need today to be your service we pray Lord that you'll continue to heal the sick and provide for the need and we thank you for all the blessings that you give for us Lord just help us stay focused on you and your word walk the walk talk the talk and do this you put us here on this earth to do to be obedient to your will in Jesus name amen